Edward Stevenson with TimelessWall.net, and this will be technical analysis on BP PLC, formerly known as British Petroleum. If you've been following the news on BP, you know that there's nothing uh, positive to report. Simply put, nothing seems to be going BP's way, and longs are suffering as a result. CNBC and all sorts of other influential financial networks are taking advantage and letting investors know that they really don't like this stock. All sorts of analysts are downgrading and there's panic in this market. Uh, that leads me to, na to my next point, which is one of two things that I expect to happen. The first of which is things do go BP's way. At some point in time, the company corrects its mistakes and lets shareholders know that it's there for them. Uh, it cares and it knows what's going on and it appreciates their loyalty and the market corrects itself. The second thing is uh, things don't go BP's way. Things are either prolonged or take a much longer time to resolve and the market continues to move to the downside by which I would expect a technical bounce or technical correction. With that being said, uh, take what you hear in the news uh, what analysts are, analysts are saying and all sorts of news sources with a grain of salt. You know, the market tends to over-exaggerate all sorts of events, whether they're bearish or bullish. Um, this one included. Time and time again, I've seen um, analysts and financial networks downgrade a stock to such an extent that you know it tumbles to what almost seems like nothing, and then you know all of a sudden rebounds. And where are these uh, bears to be found? Well, nowhere. You know, they've they fulfilled their agendas and moved on. So what I'd like to do is take a look at supporting levels which will play a key role in BP's market, the first of which is at 36.25. Uh, I'm just basing that on the weekly chart we'll take a look at after. Um, these two supporting trend lines I drew in based on the monthly chart actually and the reason being is of course as you can see on the daily chart the price is broken below um, either one of these two supporting levels so what I what I was forced to do actually was take a look at the weekly chart to try to find a supporting level there and I did I found one in uh, this area which looks like it's right around uh, just shy of 37 actually uh, the lows coming off of you know late 2003 early 2003 trading so yes you know quite shocking I have to go back this far but given the uh, more than modest decline in share price and the type of selling volume we've seen you know, I've been forced to uh, scroll back quite a while. In fact, a few decades with the monthly chart. You know, here's where I can identify this supporting level a little more clearly, and uh, it'll be based on this supporting area right here. So you can see, for a few years, this trend line was very significant in the late '90s, the early 2000s, right here, and even this period right here, where um, the price bounced from looks like 36 all the way to 60. So you know more or less doubled so let's take a look at what that price is below we need the open there 36.92 so to be conservative we'll say 37 let's just get that back up there there we go and uh, again coming off this past month the market uh, tumbled below us so we need a new supporting level. We found one with this period where you can see the price consolidated and uh, held its ground. Twice it kind of dipped and uh, didn't even test this mark really, but found support elsewhere just above. Nonetheless, uh, the low here, 32.44, uh, with another candle. Let's just say this one right here, 32.84. So just to be conservative, we'll say roughly 32 and a half. Uh, another key one, and of course, uh, ending Friday's trading session, excuse me, ending Monday's trading session, uh, today that being, you can see the price closed at 30.67, so well below that 32.5 supporting mark. Uh, another minor one I drew in, and I just use a trend line here more than a horizontal supporting line, uh, because this is very insignificant support um, compared with some of these other trend lines I drew in. And let's just check out where that is. That's based on this channel here at 27.62. So again, just to round off and for us to better remember it, we'll say 27 and a half. So that's a key mark that I expect the price will tackle at some point and may 
see a correction afterwards. If not, this is the key one, um, the one where you know it's either uh, break or be broken, so to speak. Do or die is actually the phrase I'm looking for. Do or die uh, at this mark, and that's 2131. Another mark, 21, and based on the high coming of this this period here, 2156. So I'm going to say 21 and a half, the supporting trend line, very significant. And as you can see, it dates back to being a very significant resisting trend line back in the late 80s, early 90s, and mid 90s before it broke above and, of course, headed towards the $75 mark in the first decade of the 21st century. On the resistance end, we're looking at the two supporting trend lines that failed. So let's just get back into the daily chart and take a look at those again. Uh, if you recall, 36.25, this one right here, and this one being 32.5. So those are two key resisting trend lines to focus on in terms of the chart making any sort of upside. Uh, do I expect some more downside? Yes, the market is oversold. I do expect a technical bounce, worst case scenario. Uh, but this is what it is, and we have to take what we hear with a grain of salt because a correction can occur at any point in time, depending on you know, the type of statements that BP issues and things of that nature. So once again, this was Edward Stevenson with TimelessWallThought.net. If there are any questions, please feel free to contact me. Simply visit TimelessWallThought.net and look for our contact section. On that note, I'd like to, I'd like to invite everyone to uh, try our resources. We, all, we have all sorts of educational pieces. Uh, watch lists, stock picks, and a free newsletter that uh, we send out with undervalued investment ideas and overlooked trading opportunities. Once again, thank you for listening.